the six longevity supplements or the six longevity vitamins or supplements or whatever you want to call them that I take daily as a guy in my 30s. See, my goal isn't to try to reverse the clock. My goal is to feel the way that I feel now for as long as possible. When I look at longevity, I don't look at wanting to live forever. I say, I like how I feel now. How do I preserve this? So my spin on longevity vitamins personally might be different from some of the talking heads on YouTube talking about longevity. Might be different than cooking up some concoction in a lab for Brian Johnson. No malice on him, but he gets very creative with the kinds of things he does. Mine are basic. First of all, protein powder. That is a longevity supplement for me. Why? Because it helps me today, it helps me tomorrow, and it helps me possibly 20 years from now. So when you look at the literature and you talk to the experts, you realize that one of the most important things as we get older is our muscle mass, but our overall protein intake and how that impacts our metabolic health, how it impacts our mitochondria, how it impacts our resistance to frailty, how it impacts our strength, one of the larger predictive indicators is our grip strength and our overall ability to maintain strength and, and muscle. So I can take action today and it solves a problem today of helping me keep my muscle mass, helps me be strong and live an active life, but it also helps me remain strong and keeps my function as time goes on. Now roped in with that category, I'll also say essential amino acids. The literature is becoming clearer that leucine is very powerful when it comes down to repair. And for a long time, we think longevity is just about how do we restrict, restrict, restrict so we can just live longer, right? Burn hot, die young, or you can burn quietly and live long. So we don't want a lot of like repair and recovery and a lot of fuel, but leucine stimulates this repair and recovery that we need. It's a balance of like autophagy and breakdown and scarcity and repair and rebuilding and strength. So essential amino acids, I take randomly throughout the day sometimes, especially if I can't get enough protein in. The next one is taurine. I take about three grams to five grams per day. And you've heard me talk about taurine as a performance aid because there's a ton of literature there. But again, I am an active person in my 30s. So I look at my supplement regime as what can I take that's gonna help me today, but also help me 20, 30, 40 years from now. And the literature on taurine for performance is amazing, but now there's new literature published in the journal Science that is fascinating, demonstrating that taurine, at least in mice, was increasing life expectancy 10 to 12%. That's huge. In addition to that, it was increasing health span. It was increasing their strength. It decreased the age-related weight gain by about 10%. And this paper was not just with mice. Some subjects were just with mice, but they looked at humans, they looked at mice, they looked at monkeys, they looked at in vitro, in vivo, all over the place to look at taurine as a mitochondrial protectant, as a senescent cell staver offer, however you wanna say that, but a number of other things. Mainly, it's a powerful antioxidant that is helping prevent our body from having these catastrophic sort of oxidative stress occurring in abundance. So if you're active, it's especially important because it can preserve that and it helps protect you from some of the damage that can occur as a result of that. So taurine is a huge one in my book. Next up is NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide. Now I've talked about this before, but I started taking it maybe three years ago and I still take it daily. And the reason I find it so important is because I know the importance of nicotinamide adenide dinucleotide, of NAD. I know how important that is, that little bit of energy, right? NAD, if we didn't have it, we'd be dead in 15 seconds. It's that critical. But as we get older and as we damage our bodies more, and I'm someone that unfortunately damages my body a lot, the way that I train, the way that I, I work out, maybe it's not always good, but either way, when there is DNA damage, when there is damage, it requires NAD to go deal with that, to influence the repair the best it can. That means you're pulling from NAD that would otherwise help with mitochondrial repair. Get what I'm going at with this? So our mitochondria is our energy powerhouse. If that starts to get weaker and gets decrepit and dysfunctional and damaged, so does our metabolic health. So does our health span. So does potentially our lifespan. But if we can maintain sort of the foot that sort of pushes the gas pedal to help repair of that, 
then we can have that for a longer period of time. So for me, making sure that I have a precursor for NAD rather than just taking NAD supplements that break down or even NAD infusions via an IV that are crazy expensive and really don't give you much more than a temporary lift, it just makes a lot of sense. Protect myself from the damage now so that my body can take care of the mitochondria for later. I put a link down below for the NMN that I use. There's a few companies, just a small handful of companies that create them. And the link that I put down below is for Verso. That's a 15% off discount link. They have a product called Cell Being, which is not just NMN. It's combined with a few other things to help kind of round the entire corners there. Now also has uh, trans resveratrol, which is the bioavailable form of resveratrol, which helps NMN do its job a little bit better. Verso also cold stores all of this product. So that means it's going to have a little bit more of a shelf life. And when you cold store it, then they expedite ship it. It ends up making it so you have something that's not broken down. There's a lot of evidence that suggests that NMN can kind of break down if it's not in cold storage. I do recommend, especially if you're an active person, that you start taking it at a younger age and just continue to take it regularly. I noticed it after, I don't know, a couple of weeks, I just noticed more clean, clear energy, but it's one of those things that you may not notice for a longer period of time, which is hard because then it feels like an insurance policy on your body. But trust me, it is something that I would recommend. So that link is down below. Next up is one that people don't always put in a longevity category, but it doesn't make sense why they wouldn't. It's coenzyme Q10, CoQ10. Now CoQ10 sort of accepts electrons through this reducing equivalence. So essentially what happens is when we take food, like glucose or fats from, from food, they get turned into electrons. And these electrons get dropped from different levels inside of our mitochondria. And when they drop from these different levels, they create little explosions. Each time it drops. Okay, it's like dropping a bowling ball from a floor. Okay, you drop it to the next floor, boom. Drop it to the next floor, boom. Well, coenzyme Q10 is sort of like a big catcher's mitt that catches that electron. You need to catch that electron because if that electron falls and it bounces out, that's a high amount of oxidative stress. The mitochondria is 10 times more likely to have a mutation than any other cell or organelle in the human body because there's so much hot energy happening at that place. So if that electron bounces and goes cattywampus, you have oxidative stress, which could damage your mitochondria more. Coenzyme Q10 helps make it so that you're able to catch it, a bigger floor, so to speak, for that bowling ball to land on. It also creates a proton gradient in the membranes so that energy can sort of pass through easier. Long and the short of it is, by making energy be a little bit more clean, it gives you more ATP, helps with ATP formation and energy, and it helps protect the mitochondria once again. All these things I look at, can this help me with performance today? box checked, and can it help me with my health span 20 or 30 years from now? Box checked. Next up is another one that people like to rain on, but this is one that I take almost every day, ranging from 300 to 900 milligrams, and that is alpha lipoic acid. Now, some of the evidence on alpha lipoic acid is kind of weak, but where the evidence gets strong is if you're an active person. We've all seen that runner, that marathon runner, that's 60 years old that looks like he's 90 or looks like he's 60 when he's 40 because he's caused so much oxidative damage from beating his body into the ground. There is a balance between finding that minimum effective dose of training and recovering from it. And if you are gonna push it a little bit more, you might need to supplement a little bit more to offset it and let you use that exercise to your advantage. What good is exercise and building muscle to help you later in life if in the process you destroy your body? There was a study published in Oxidative Medicine that had type two diabetics take 600 milligrams of alpha lipoic acid daily. They found that when they took this, it restored their C-reactive protein levels and their interleukin-6 levels and other inflammatory markers back down to baseline. It also restored their oxidative stress markers back to baseline. So people with metabolic issues were able to get a huge leg up and bring some of their inflammatory markers down to baseline so there's a little less stress on the body. Then there was a study published in Biology of Sport that found that taking alpha lipoic acid reduced the oxidative damage associated with exercise. It also reduced creatine kinase, which is a marker of muscle breakdown in a bad way, so to speak, kinda, 
in people that were exercising. Now, to make matters even better, they found that taking alpha lipoic acid increased EPO. If you've heard of EPO before, it's something that people that are blood doping use, but EPO is something that sort of preserves red blood cells and also creates more red blood cells. So it has a huge performance attribute, but also has an oxygen delivery attribute, which could help us feel better, perform better, and once again, protect our mitochondria longer in life, right? So again, what can I do today that helps me today and also helps me tomorrow? And then the last one, that is one that people would never think as a longevity supplement, is creatine. People think creatine would take years off your life. People will say it's kidney toxic. People will say that it makes your hair fall out. The bottom line is we get it from meat. And when we eat a normal diet, long into our healthy, like aging years, we would get enough creatine, but most of us aren't eating enough of that healthy meat, right? So we need to take in creatine from a supplement. That's fine, I'm not talking 100 grams of it. I'm talking three, maybe five. And the evidence on it being an anti-inflammatory compound by giving your body the additional creatine phosphate stores to have the energy to combat issues and deal with potential illness, repair, recovery, you name it, stress, sleep deprivation, it can offset many of these things by not just a little bit, sometimes a fair bit. You see the common denominator with all of this. Energy, mitochondria, inflammation. These are the six supplements that I think play a role with that. And if I had to add a seventh, it would be cod liver oil or at least vitamin D. Since vitamin D please, seems to play a role, but cod liver oil contains omega-3s, vitamin D, and vitamin A. But I've done enough videos on that. You don't need to hear me talk about that one. As always, I'll see you tomorrow. Keep it locked into my channel.